Psalm 74 verse 20 says, Have respect unto the covenant, for the earth is full of dark places of cruelty. So we must respect what we are taught here. You don't need to be begged to deal with your spiritual issues. Your spiritual issues need to be dealt with urgently. Put an urgent sticker on your spiritual issues. It is more urgent for you to raise spiritual capital to put on God's altar than it is for you to raise capital to start your business. Because even if you get the capital to start a business without sorting out the spiritual first, that business will still crumble. This has been the story of your life. So we need to be uh, very aggressive and intentional. That's the word I'm looking for. Intentional about fixing our spiritual lives. You operate under an environment you operate under an atmosphere and that atmosphere comes from the evil altars working against you you operate under a what an atmosphere you where you are you carry an atmosphere okay what is bad luck bad luck is when good people around you respond to the evil atmosphere around you. So you can be a good person. Hello? A very good person. Somebody say I'm a good person. You can be a good person with, an, with a very good project but have an evil atmosphere. No matter how good your business model is, it is at the mercy of the atmosphere under which you operate. So the spirit following you determines what happens to you. Are you getting it, saints? And for years, we've been shadow boxing because we didn't understand that I've got to deal with my spirituality because my spirituality determines what happens around me. The Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are Temporal, temporal meaning subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So the spiritual world is eternal. What you are seeing is temporary. So what you are seeing, temporal, can be changed from the realm of the spirit. You change your marriage from the realm of the spirit. Stop fighting with your husband. You don't have the words to change him. You've tried. Surrender. Adjust his attitude from the realm of the spirit. Finish. Finish. If a man comes from a polygamous background and you are married to him, get ready to deal with all sorts of nonsense. But if you deal with it from the natural realm, you will never win. Because even if you fight with him in the natural, you are fighting with the consequences of the altar from which he comes. You can go for counseling. Won't change. You can sit down and discuss. You can go for couples retreat. Enjoy the retreat. The retreat does not change the spiritual dynamics. It's just a place to go and play with water. You swim. You See sunset, go for sunset cruise, but you come back, the altar is waiting for you at home. So here's the problem, also. You have not dealt with the problems early. Remember what was a snake in the Garden of Eden was a dragon in the book of Revelations. Because it wasn't dealt with. So Psalm 101, verse number 8, I think it is. Yes, he says, early I will destroy all the wicked of the land. Early, early I will destroy all the wicked. So you need to break the yoke of your life early. <laughs> Daughter, why did he say do it early? Because if you delay to do it, all the years in which you have not dealt with the yoke are nonsense. Destroy it early. 
Look at how your fathers failed. They failed dismally because of these altars. And you, they, they, see, the altars have continued to deal with you beyond your fathers. Your father is already resting. He's tired. Because he couldn't deal with these altars. Now the focus of the altars is on you. The next generation. It's amazing how evil altars are focused on people, but the people are not focused in church. Like I'm harassing them. Like apostle is just a bit over the top, you know. Does it really take all that? But look at your life. Even people who owe you money from abroad, where there's money, they don't want to pay you. It's frustrating to know that someone has the money, but they just don't want to pay. Church, you need to wake up. There's an age that you get to that men become suspicious about marrying you. Mm, what has kept this one by? Mm, mm. I won't mention the age. Lest you panic. <laughs> but there's an age. Yeah. Most brethren are under the influence of evil altars. <laughs> Bella, being nice is not the seed for results. There are nice people who are bound. Very nice, good character, solid always smiling, but bound from evil altars. Again, the Lord said to me this morning, what is your rush on this series? Don't rush. How can you try and rush to sort out the biggest problem they have? He says, if I tell you to do this the rest of the year, do what I'm telling you. Because even if you go and talk about favor, they will not have favor because the altars are holding the favor. There is an evil grip holding your destiny. Sponsored from evil altars. And until that grip loses you, you are going nowhere. Things don't change because of time. Problems are just revealed over time. From the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You are not given things in this kingdom. You take them. So stop telling me I receive. Stop receiving. Start taking. <laughs> the kingdom is on a forceful advance. You are not given contracts. You take them. And you have to take them in the spirit realm first. You have been grasping at things in the natural realm without fixing the spiritual realm. So even if you get it in the natural realm, you still lose it. If you don't secure it spiritually. Any transaction that is not spiritually secured, you will lose it. Or you will lose the proceeds. You might as well not have done the transaction. That's why if you have not had a car for a long time in your life, by the time you get the car, you need to run urgently with the car here for us to dedicate it. Because the powers that kept you a pedestrian for years do not die the day you buy a car. They are still there. Wanting to send you back to default settings. Walking. If you want, we can do an experiment. I'll give you, you who's not had a car for a long time, I'll give you a car and just tell you not to pray for three weeks. We'll find your car at VID junkyard there. Altars. Altars. Speaking. Dangerous things against you. Many prioritize buying new jeans than servicing altars financially. You have 32 blue jeans, you want another one instead of packaging a sacrifice. The deception of the devil. 
Every instruction I give you from here is an instruction of liberty. Liberty, liberty, liberty. So the spirits that have you bound will make you argue with the instructions. It's not you. No one does not want to be free. I mean, the Bible is clear. For, for, for your captivity to be turned around, you sow in tears and you reap in joy. The Bible is clear. I'm preaching scripture. I'm not preaching Chipoera Constitution. This is scripture. So by the time you argue with that instruction, it's not you. It's not you. You want to pray in tears? To reap in joy? You're joking. You've got to sow in tears. And you've got to sow on the right frequency. Because the Bible says in that same one, Psalm 126, He who continually, it's not a once and for all, it's a once and again. He who continually, every month, comes with precious seed. Continually. You don't get a breakthrough after the first sacrifice. Unfortunately. There it is. He who continually, not he who did it once, he who continually goes forth weeping. Why are they crying? Bearing precious seed for sowing. Sacrifice. Shall come again rejoicing. So you will not rejoice until you enter the continually group. You can argue with that as usual. It's fine. Ah, but I gave. Once, yes. The breakthroughs are for the continually. Is that in your Bible? But do you know how many people are arguing with that right now? Definitely. <laughs> continually. I've prayed before. Continually. Do you know what that is saying? That scripture is saying sacrifice must become a lifestyle if you are interested in breakthroughs. The Lord said, there's room at the top if you're interested. I said, I'm interested. He said, bring your S-class. I put it on the altar. What does sacrifice do? You prosper despite the presence of witches, wizards, and altars. <laughs> Real money, not pocket change. The economy notwithstanding, what is the Reserve Bank? Is it even in the Bible? The Reserve Bank is not in the Bible. Arab said did not make it to the Bible. What is Minister of Finance? What does that have to do with a cup of tea? You don't prosper because of the economy. The Lord said, you must be careful. Because some of you are trying to evangelize relatives who don't want to be born again. They're not interested in your Jesus. You are excited about breaking evil altars. They don't want the altars broken. Josh, this will bless you. The Lord said to me, why did Jesus never try and evangelize to the Sadducees and the Pharisees? Do you think he didn't have the power to change them? He did, but they didn't want. Listen to what he called them. You brood of vipers. Description. There are broods of vipers in your family that you are trying to evangelize. Stop it. Sons of perdition, they are specialized in their spiritual rebellion against God. Because their strength comes from those evil altars. So it is expedient for them that those altars should continue. Many, many people are under spiritual bondage in their workplaces. Their bosses, they consult evil altars. And part of the covenant on those evil altars is everyone who works for me must never rise above me, number one. Number two, I want their glory and their virtue. So your boss... Is not just paying you a salary. He's drawing power from you. That's why you never think of starting your own business. It took me fighting with you to leave work. Now every two days, if you just do transactions, you've earned your salary. That you have holding on to. Ah, men of God, 
just see a seer. And when you leave, that boss becomes your enemy. <laughs> is it about competing on the marketplace? No, he's established. So it's not, it's not about that. He has just lost a captive. Isaiah 49, shall the captives of the mighty be delivered. If you knew spiritually what is following you, you would beg me to have morning prayer every day. Many times people don't know. I would see the chat. Oh Lord, open the eyes of these young men and women that they may see the intensity of the spiritual battles that are following them. I have a question. When somebody in a family buys a new car, is it not a good thing for that family? But it's amazing how, even if you see in times past, when somebody who was sick for a long time was healed, the Sadducees and the Pharisees would be angry. Whoever is angry at a sudden positive shift in your life is a representative of evil altars and they must be dealt with. They must be dealt with. Do not tolerate people who despise your progress. They are what are called over my dead body enemies. They are saying you will never succeed except over my dead body. That means that I am standing there as a barrier between you and success. So the barriers must be removed. The barriers must be removed. Whether they are things or they are people, they must be removed. Whatever removal means is up to God. But I will pray because the Bible says uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah 6 verse 1, I saw the Lord, I saw the Lord. There are some King Uzziahs that must die for you to see the Lord. I said King Uzziah must go for you to see prosperity, for you to see elevation, for you to see increase. Uh, there are some King Uzziahs that must go for your marriage to be set free. Job 5. Verse 12 and 13. He frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. I speak over your life. Whatever plans are there of the wicked one against your destiny, they must be frustrated for your sake. If you do not uproot and destroy evil altars, even if you are a good person, bad things happen to good people when evil altars are in operation. Lift up your right hand. Say familiar spirits are signed against me from evil altars right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of, those, of the Holy Ghost those evil altars working against me receive supernatural destruction this day in the name of Jesus I demand my freedom you powers of darkness catch fire Obadiah 117 says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness hallelujah that holiness includes cleaning up your life spiritually so you can be walking upright but you are not holy let me explain that if there is a spirit husband that is sleeping with you you are walking upright but in the spirit you are dirty so that holiness includes spiritual cleansing from the powers of your father's house that word holiness is a loaded word are you getting it only after you deal with that then the house of Jacob shall possess listen to this their possessions the house was already yours it's already yours but you can't have it until you are fully delivered so what is urgent not to look for the house no to look for the total deliverance Mount Zion is a church hello 
but it is also an altar. Listen, it's not just about church. You are a professional in churchianity. Ah, you know all the church lingo. What will help you is not a church. It's an altar. Because you are not fighting churches, you are fighting altars. Altar versus send me help from the sanctuary, Psalm 20. But you can't have help from a sanctuary or an altar you don't service. It's not scriptural. Moses was on the mountain. The mountain talks of an altar. And his hands were raised. Hello? On the mountain. And Joshua was winning where? In the valley. The valley talks of the marketplace. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There's death on the marketplace. I shall fear no what? No evil. Why? For thou art with me. When you go on the marketplace, my anointing from this altar must go with you. Oh, there are some who are arguing. So, I'll bring another scripture into play. When Gehazi went and did this nonsense with, uh, with Naaman, what did the man of God say? Was I not with you? So, Moses on the mountain, on the altar, was with Joshua on the marketplace. You are running around, but you are catching nothing. Service the altar. One word from this altar can change your life. Only if you are connected. Listen to what the Lord said to me. He said when Moses was lifting up his hands, it's not, it's not everyone who was winning. It's the ones who were connected to him. That's why Joshua's name was mentioned. There were others there who were losing. Uh -uh. The marketplace is a battlefield. There are some who die on the marketplace if you're not connected. Are you connected to this altar or are you speaking grammar? You can connect online, but are you connected to the altar? If your sacrifice has never touched KPM here, yeah, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of watching Hollywood that you're doing online. It's like you're watching Friends or uh, you know, it's cheap. Big Bang Theory. But if you are connected, one declaration from here can touch your life in Canada. So, there are things I will speak in the auditorium and I will say every tithe I receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. But if you are not a tithe, it won't touch you. And one thing that will disconnect you is your big mouth. Be careful how you relate with the man standing on the altar. This is one thing that Southern Africa needs to learn and needs to understand. This is the power of the church in Nigeria. They hold men of God in high esteem. It's in your Bible. The Bible says, esteem them very highly. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother your natural mother and, mother and father with one honor. When it comes to men of God, he says, they are worthy of double honor. So don't treat me like your father. No, I'm teaching you Bible. I'm teaching you Bible. Church, we have, we, we have taken servants of God as people who are just doing a job. No. No. Your destiny is connected to this altar. Take this altar seriously. Because when I speak, help must come to you. When I speak, doors must open. When I speak, witches must scatter. When I speak, things must change. So stop procrastinating servicing the altar. Don't just say, let me wait and see. Wait and see what? You are waiting to see your destruction by evil altars. Don't procrastinate obedience, the Lord said. Don't procrastinate it. Don't toy with it. Don't keep money in your safe when it is supposed to. Listen, oh, thank you, Lord. He said, if you do not service the altar, your money in your safe is not safe. Because the demonic powers, are you listening to me? They will come and collect that money. There are powers in the territory. If you go back to 
that uh, 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 Mark chapter 5 was the, the demons they begged Jesus get out of our territory and the Lord said to me listen to this he said he, 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 he edited what I was doing thank you Holy Spirit and he said you must destroy the powers from your father's house okay those ones you have authority to destroy but listen to what he told me this will shock you. He said, territorial powers, you can't destroy them. You're not strong enough. He said, if the demons could negotiate with Jesus, for Jesus to leave the territory. He said, if you attack territorial powers, you'll be in trouble. The best you can do with territorial powers is to make sure there's divine exemption. <laughs> Hello? He said, because these are such ancient spirits, national spirits, national altars. He said, leave them alone. Just make sure you and your children are exempt. And he gave me the scripture in Mark 5. He says, Jesus, they negotiated with him for him to get out of the territory. Read your Bible. Jesus did not say, I'm Jesus. He got out of the territory. Oh, the ones from your father's house, you can deal with them. But the powers in the banking industry, you can't destroy them. You, ca you don't have the power or the spiritual investment to destroy those powers. What you do is you command divine exemption. It's like the angel of death came around Egypt. They didn't have power to stop the angel of death. They have power to exempt themselves. I, I'm teaching you a spiritual technology. If you exempt yourself from these powers, you begin to win on the marketplace. And the Lord said to me, do you know why? Because Lucifer himself is in charge of those territories. You can't kill the devil. Paul came, he left him here. With Smigosworth came, he left him here. Jesus came, he left the devil here. It's not yet his time. So ex just exempt yourself. Do you know the anointing that it takes for you to take over the oil industry? Because the demonic networkings, the Freemasons, the black occult, the powers from the water. If you read about oil, Nella, the, see the Bible says in Deuteronomy 33 verse 19. He talks there about, put it up there. He says, they shall come, they shall call the people to the mountain. That's an altar. And they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness. For they shall partake of the abundance of the seas. Hello? Hello? The real money is in energy. Oil comes from the sea. So the, there's a, a level of sacrifice that you do for you to partake. To sit on those corridors of power or on those tables of power where they discuss and share portions of the land or portions of contracts with regional consequence in one dimension here. and then you see you will not be able to partake of those things that's energy because oil comes from the sea hello there's also fishing industry. It comes from the sea. Why can you not become the sole distributor of prawns in the nation? Because there's somebody who's in charge of that. And they are part of those demonic networks. They are strong in the occult. While you are weak in sacrifice. And then he talks there about and treasures hidden in the sand. You think you can have a mind you. With your hundred dollar sacrifice you want to mine you want to negotiate with territorial powers with hundred us dollars to mine to mine what we have not started why does the bible says the wealth of the wicked shall eventually eventually after you do what i'm telling you eventually it's in your bible shall eventually find its way to the just but they just right now, they are still foolish in their ways. Because the children of the world are still wiser in their spiritual dealings. If you don't tithe, you have no spiritual insurance. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, so you have baby insurance. I'm glad you asked. Bring the tithe. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. There are seven blessings in Malachi chapter 3. I don't have time. Blessings of tithing. One of them is God rebuking the devourer. Who is the devourer? Wujiki. Where does Wujiki come from? It comes from evil altars. So your money is spent from evil altars. Ruku budgeted one a strong man. Petra Wujika Mafufu, though you have a big business model. There are people with big business models, but they have very, very small income. Why? Because businesses don't tithe. Spiritual laws are responsible for the releasing of wealth from the kingdom of God into your hands. Natural laws are responsible for managing the wealth. You need both. <laughs> Leviticus 27.30, put it up there. He says, all the tithe of the land, listen to this, whether of the seed of the land, what you plant, or the fruit of the tree, what you just receive, passive income. Belongs to God. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I'm saying. Passive income. <laughs> Have you tithed from your money on the stock exchange? The fruit of the tree. It belongs to God. It is holy unto the Lord. If you eat holy things, you are in trouble. The worth of a man is not in his dress, but in his address. Jesus endorsed tithing, Matthew 23, 23. Mm -hmm. He says there are more weightier matters, but the tithe, he didn't say no. Matthew 23, verse 23. Jesus, boom. If you don't tithe, listen to me. If you don't tithe, your children who are in your loins have also consumed the tithe with you. Hebrews 7, 7, put it up there. Let's see. Now, indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi. Listen, Albert, do you know what the Lord said? He said, there are many poor pastors in town. Check it. I said, yes, Lord. He said, why? He said, because they ordained themselves as pastors. No one gave them the right to receive tithes. I can meet you in Borodo Village and receive your tithe. I'm authorized. Indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, the Levites, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes. New Ten Testament. If I'm not receiving tithes from you, do that Isaac, is it not a commandment? It's not a suggestion. He says, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment, not a suggestion, to receive tithes from the people according to the law. That is, from their brethren. That's it, we, we, we went to the same school. Though they have come from the loins of Abraham. So when Abraham tithed, we were in the loins of Abraham. Why were the Levites given permission to receive tithes? Because Abraham tithed. Wow. They, wow and, the, and those guys were in his loins. Question. You who's not tithing and you don't even yet have a child, you're already creating a trouble future for your children. Our forefathers did not tithe. That's where our problem started. Africa started from minus 1,000. Will a man rob, rob God? Somebody say robbing God. Imagine the boldness. I mean, God asked the question, will a man rob God? <laughs> and yet, despite that boldness, you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Is that in your Bible? There are offerings God told you to give. You didn't give it. So if you don't bring the 25%, you have robbed God. Are you here? Somebody say, I'm determined to change my story. 
Imagine your natural biological father. He died at 70. So for 70 years, why did you check me? Say, I saturate this whole environment with the blood of Jesus. I sanctify myself with the blood of Jesus. Any sin in my life that would hinder my warfare, my Father, my God, forgive me of any and all sin in my life. Wash me clean by the power in the blood of Jesus. Jehovah God, position angels in battle array in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost as angels are positioned, put in their hands swords blazing swords swords of fire and i activate the god of vengeance to begin to war on my behalf as i pray right now in the holy ghost any evil altar in my background i release angels to war against those altars begin to pray aggressively i said they'll be frustrated for your sake whether it's evil birds whether it is evil animals they shall be frustrated for your sake we remove the power source hallelujah we go to the altars that are empowering the evil birds and we crush them by the hand of jehovah for jeremiah 51 verse 20 to 22 says i am god's battle axe if i have god's battle axe in here begin to pray and destroy we are weapons of war fighting for our generations lift up your right hand say any evil programming from evil altars I deprogram you by the power of the Holy Ghost anti-marriage programming spirit husbands programmed alcoholism programmed sin programmed I deprogram you in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray like a soldier pray like a soldier